Hey everybody, what's up? Unrest it back and today I am going over a video about the fall of a JVlogger who actually has no presence whatsoever online, hence I feel um, okay about doing this. I think they've kind of left the whole online aspect of their life behind. Um, I wish them the best now, but there was a tumultuous situation that went down over many, many years. This went on for ages and was actually, as I've said before, one of the biggest reasons of breakups, fall downs, and collapses of the JVlog community. Um, not blaming the whole thing on this person, but this was one of the linchpins in um, most of the JVloggers themselves uh, splitting up and kind of going their own way and doing their own thing and how there's not really a community of that anymore. That is Canada Gen 3, or also known as Mira or Miranda, okay? Um, this story goes on for a really long time. I hope you have a snack and something to drink because this is going to be a long one. Um, of course, I want to state at the very beginning, I don't want to see anybody harass, find, try to do anything to this person. I don't want to hear anything about hating this person anymore. This is long past us now. Um, I do want to reflect on the fact that this was a monumental part of J vlogging and its history, um, the community I was part of for the last 15 years. And um, I want to analyze this because, number one, it came up a bunch when I was looking up Eat Your Kimchi's downfall. Number two, I spoke about it briefly in the downfall of J vlogging. And number four, I myself had to go back through all of this and see exactly how it happened because at first I remembered it just as. A battle between two J vloggers over the production of clothes from China. But when I went back and researched the full thing, I realized, wow, this went like way deeper um, and touched on so many different parts of the J vlogging community and its eventual collapse and people going their own separate ways and be branching out into their own channels and other people quitting and never coming back. That I need to talk about this to continue to reflect on the history and see even mistakes that I myself made. Um, there's parts of this story where I myself made some big errors of how I handled things, but also I guess to reflect on how being a YouTuber or being a JVlogger can sometimes be more of a curse than a blessing. It cannot be for everybody. And I know some of the people who watch my channel always ask me about filming in Japan. So I think this will also help them to answer one of the questions of when I go to Japan, would it be cool to become a J vlogger too? Would it be cool to record everything? Um, here's some of the nasty stuff you might get into. So Canada Gen 3's downfall. Who was Canada Gen, AKA Mira? Um, she was one of the more popular J vloggers when our community very first started. To give you an idea of how much bigger she was compared to my channel, I think I was at about 10K during the time I ran into her channel and had my first um, notice of her and the community happenings around her. I had heard kind of of her before, but I'd never really checked out her channel. Sometimes a lot of us J vloggers don't always listen to everything other J vloggers make because we're already living in Japan. So like, for example, a J fact, a Japan's frequently asked questions, not always something I'm going to watch because it's been answered by me actually living there and experiencing it firsthand. I'm sure you understand. Um, obviously no disrespect to people making any kind of video that is informative about Japan. It's just, I might already know that information. Um, she had 70,000 during the time that I was 10K. So she was big, big um, for that time. We're talking like this is early 2010. So 70K during that time, decent channel. Um, so um, she started out with vids that were kind of more edgy than what a lot of us were doing. Um, and not edgy necessarily in a bad way, but eventually they did evolve into um, I guess pushing the boundaries of what you'd want to put up on YouTube. So let's start out with some of the first ones she came out with what what it was like to have a part-time job in Japan. Not a big deal. I think that's a pretty good video. Arubaito, as it's called. Um, there's different visas where you would work part-time. Um, a working holiday visa, for example, something you cannot get if you're an American, but you can if you're Australian, Canadian, New Zealander, UK, whatever. Um, so very informative. I think a great video to make. Being a housewife in Japan, as you know, there's still the common job of being a housewife in Japan. I think something sometimes other cultures look down upon, but really it is a notoriously ultra busy, ultra high speed, um, 
very respectable job. It is a job. You are doing a lot as a housewife in Japan. It's no joke. So another one, good, informing people about how deep and um, immersive the work is that a housewife does in Japan. I think a great one. Fashion in Japan. Hey, that's an innocent video. Japan is known for its fashion, especially Tokyo and Osaka. Um, so of course you're going to cover topics like that. I think there's a lot of people out there interested in Japanese fashion, which I can completely understand. Japan comes out with some pretty sick trends, right? Um, number one, I want to give her some uh, props to start off with. Her Japanese was really good. Um, she could speak, I don't want to say at a native level, but she by far surpassed many of us J-vloggers who broke in patchwork sentence. Um, we spoke in... Um, one or two words at a time at that point because we hadn't even lived in Japan that long. She was like literally sounding fluent, could speak long and immersively into a topic and really get her point across in Japanese, which a lot of us could not do at that time. Later, I did pick up more Japanese and become better at it. I would never really say that I'm fluent. Um, I would say I still speak like a kindergartner compared to her who spoke like probably an adult level Japanese speaker. Um, so, you know, I want to give her props for that. She came here, she immersed herself in the language, the culture, everything. Um, now, here's where we start to get into the more shaky side of what started to happen with her channel. She started to get into some controversial takes with her videos, um, some stuff that was really kind of pushing the edge, which I don't think anybody should shy away from. Uh, one thing I've always tried to do with my channel is be very balanced, talk about how wonderful Japan is, but also talk about some of the social problems such as hikikomori, um, the self-deletion rate here in Japan, um, you know, some of the other darker subjects um, that happen. Uh, one of her first, I'd say, not overly controversial, but kind of like the, the start of pushing the edge was that she said if she ever had a kid in Japan, she would never teach them English because English is pointless in Japan. Um, now, hey, how you raise your kid, there's no instruction booklet that comes with how you're supposed to raise your kid, so you are welcome to do it. I don't think it's going to physically or mentally hurt them to only teach them one language, but I think it would benefit them to make them bilingual, hence I've done so with my own children. I don't know why you would avoid teaching them English. Um, if anything, that would give them a one-up in the world of jobs, colleges, entrance exams, everything in Japan. But for her... Um, I think she felt like um, pushing the more nationalistic side of Japan, which does kind of shy away from why should we have to learn English? We Japanese speak Japanese. We do fine. Our economy's fine. Our country's awesome. We make some of the best technology, etc., etc. This is a very nationalistic viewpoint, um, which is fine to have. There's nothing wrong with taking pride in your country. Um, but going to the point of obscuring the benefit of learning a second language. I, I don't know why you would push that. Her argument was that in Canada, um, she had been forced to use, uh, to learn French and that it was pointless because she had never once used French in Canada. So she felt like this was the same situation here in Japan, that kids were being forced to learn English when English is very useless in Japan. You never need to use it. She said, I can speak Japanese all the time and everybody understands me. I never switch over to English when I'm talking to Japanese people. Uh, that got a lot of pushback and not just pushback from like other foreigners in Japan. It actually got pushback from Japanese people who were like, why? Why would you not learn a second language? If you have the ability to teach your kid that because you speak two languages, Japanese and English, um, teach them both. Well, what are you talking about? Like, that's crazy. Uh, so she got pushback from both sides of the table on that one. Um, the next one was... Japan has no ovens. <laughs> and I've talked about this actually a little bit myself before. Um, mostly I talked about it um, in the sense of when you come here to Japan to buy an apartment, rent an apartment, uh, move into a house, don't expect there to be a, con a conventional oven. Um, you're mostly going to get either just a microwave or a microwave that can kind of switch into like a toaster oven. Um, there of course are ovens in Japan at restaurants, at bakeries, um, they exist. They're not totally, but she was like hardcore about like, Japan does not need ovens. They don't cook anything that needs ovens. Ovens are not part of Japan. And like she got pushed back again from Japanese who were like, what are you talking, well, we've got ovens in Japan. Like, what are you talking about? Um, not something you would think would get overly controversial, but this did stir up quite a thread on Reddit. Um, 
disrespectful to talk on the train, that you should never talk on the train in Japan, and it's never done, and Japanese never do it, and gaijin who do, that's foreigners, gaijin, um, are awful and despicable. And if you come here doing that, you're disrespecting the country the whole time. Never do that. Japanese never do that. Um, she got pushed back again because, uh, look, Japanese trains are very quiet. They are like a library, okay? Um, very calm, very quiet. Japanese people, ultra polite. Um, does an Obachan, like Obachan is just kind of like an old lady, grab her cell phone sometimes, answer it on the train, and start talking at like 300 decibels because her hearing's really bad? Yeah, Japanese people talk on the train all the time. They have discussions face to face. It's in a low whisper, um, you know, very like lower than an inside voice, like literally like whispering in the library. They talk on the train though. And <laughs> sometimes some people, um, there's a very old population in Japan. There's like a, a huge gray generation there right now. And uh, they can be hard of hearing and talk ultra loud on their phone in Japan. Most times when I hear someone shouting extremely loud, I turn over and it's like an old person on their cell phone. They can't hear because the train is kind of loud, you know. Chuka, 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 chuka. Hello? Yes. Okay, I'll pick that up from the grocery store. Like you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Grandma, calm down. Um, they, they do talk though. It's, no one's going to like boot you off the train if you talk. I mean, if you're being a disruptive jerk and just yelling to like get views on a camera, then yes, yeah, stop. You're an idiot. Leave Japan immediately. Um, People talk. The other one that was um, somewhat controversial is you never eat while out in public in Japan. And I don't mean like out in public in a restaurant, obviously you eat there, but like walking down the street, it's disrespectful to eat in Japan. Um, another kind of goofy take, um, yeah, do like people walk down the street with a full course meal? Uh, no. Do they, you know, have a drink? Yeah, of course. There's like a billion vending machines. There's literally for every 13 people in Japan, there's one vending machine. Look up those stats. They were, you know, online. You can Google it right now. There's a billion, million, zillion vending machines. Japan is known for having a ton of vending machines. People drink and eat snacks from those all the time while walking down the street. No one cares. They're polite. They find a place to throw it away. Japanese are so polite, in fact, with doing this that they will literally take the trash and put it in their purse or their backpack. Um, rather than ever leave trash anywhere on the street. And the streets are pretty clean. Japan's known for being clean. And Japanese people are known for cleaning up after themselves and being very polite with their etiquette as far as eating out in public. But people do eat out in public. You're not going to get like arrested by the Koban if you pull out a candy bar and start snacking while you're walking. A very, again, kind of controversial take where people are like, no, that's not really true. We Japanese do eat on the street. What are you talking about? I mean, there's literally takoyaki street vendors and okonomiyaki street vendors like everywhere in Japan. People pick those up and eat them while they're walking. No one bats an eye. It's okay. Um, Japanese don't sweat because of their diet. Because of their diet, okay? Um, their diet makes them not sweat and they do not use deodorant. And I also will not use deodorant. This was her take. She said, like, now that I've come to Japan, I've adapted to the Japanese diet, I no longer have sweat that stinks, and I no longer need to use deodorant. And in fact, Japanese people don't use deodorant. It's because their diet is perfect, too. They only eat fresh fish, fresh foods, fresh vegetables, everything in Japan, fresh, fresh, fresh. No one stinks. No one sweats. Um, no. <laughs> uh, in general, Japanese actually do not use deodorant for the most part. Deodorant is still sold. You still can buy it. And there are Japanese people who are still smelly if they get sweaty, just like us disgusting foreigners. Um, but in general, most Japanese do not need to use it and they do not sweat quite as much because they have um, smaller sweat glands. It's a fact of Asian heritage they in general have smaller sweat glands than us big giant sweat gland foreigners, okay? And we are known for being stinky. And yes, your diet can be part of that, um, but that's that's not the reason. Like if you switch to an all Japanese diet, and I've done that living in Japan for 15 years, I only ate Japanese food for the most part. It was very hard to get a lot of my American favorites, you know, once in a while a pizza, once in a while a burger. But for the most part, Japanese food every day, my sweat still smelled. All my friends still had smelly sweat. We still all wore deodorant. Um, sometimes we'd import our favorites if we needed to, if we wanted to. Old Spice was hard to come by. I would import that. Um, eating a fully Japanese diet does not take away the stink from your sweat as a foreigner. Uh, she was wrong about this. <laughs> that was kind of a weird take. Um, 
Okay, and um, one other big problem she had is she wasn't great with criticism. If she got pushed back like she did on all these infamous videos, she would be deleting comments um, and firing back in the comments nonstop, arguing, and uh, it just wasn't a good look. Um, I think we all kind of did that, though. I would say I'd blame all of us for being kind of pushy back at the beginning of 2010, 2000, all the way six when some of us started, when YouTube very first started. We weren't used to the trolls yet. We weren't used to um, some of the very angry takes people would have when they would disagree with us on topics about Japan. I didn't always handle it well. I would get into arguments sometimes. Um, and I think that was just like a natural part of like learning to grow with the platform. Um, now, if I get hate comments, um, you know, don't respond, don't feed the trolls. Um, sometimes I see you guys respond and I'm not gonna stop you from doing that. Sometimes it's, your responses are funnier than anything I could have thought of as a response, so uh, good on you. But um, she was notorious for this, like to the point that like she would be deleting thousands of comments, like blocking tons of people, um, you know, to the point that she was getting called out by people of other channels who would be like, like, look, I made a response video and like you've blocked me on your channel that I can't even type in the comments. Why are you doing this? Your take on this is wrong it's okay, maybe you were misinformed, let's discuss this further, why are you blocking me? Um, which, you know, at, at the same time that is her own right, she can do that, she can block, she can delete, she can argue. Uh, but it did not make her a lot of friends in the community. Um, now, we get to her most edgy and most controversial video, which, when I first heard about this happening, it had already been taken down, so I, at first I thought this was a joke. I literally... I heard about this and thought this was completely made up. Mira did a blackface video, uh, Kanada Gen 3, yes, she did a blackface video where she painted her arms and her face dark skin color and then she put on a wig that was like a black person's hair. I'm not making any of this up, it has been re-uploaded to YouTube multiple times now. I am still just as shocked as you probably are if you've heard this for the first time that this actually happened and actually exists. Um, the reason she did this video, which <laughs> she wanted to prove that Japanese people were not racist towards black people because it had been said many times in Japanese forums on Reddit, um, 4chan, Nichan, all these different channels have forums and threads that Japanese people were extremely racist towards black people and Mira wanted to prove this wrong because she loves Japan. So she dressed up like a black person, painted herself like a black person, and wore a black person's wig, um, and walked out in public and filmed this. Why? <laughs> it's just painful to even, like, repeat this as a thing that actually happened. Um, yeah, she got, like, absolutely, you know, nuked by the comments, and the hate, and the dislikes, and that video did horrible. <laughs> Of course, people are like, oh my god, what are you doing? Like, it'd be the equivalent to me like dressing up as a KKK member and burning a cross and then standing out in the middle of like Ame Mura or Triangle Park in Japan's downtown and being like, look, no Japanese people are joining my KKK ceremony. Japanese aren't racist. You'd be like, yeah, but Scott, you realize right now you are dressed up as a KKK member. What are you doing? Stop. <laughs> um, there's better ways to handle this. Um, yeah, so she got like a uh, hardcore pushback from this to the point that she deleted the video. And then when people would confront her about it, when people would ask her why she did this, her response was that the thumbnail, because the video, like I said, was re-uploaded, she said the thumbnail was photoshopped and that someone had altered the video to make her look like she had dressed up as a black person. Um, and that all this was lies. It was like video editing technology that had made this video look like it was real. They had just cobbled together other clips from old videos and made it look like she had tried to do blackface, which no, <laughs> no one's, first of all, like maybe, maybe you could think someone might take the time to do with that in Photoshop for a thumbnail. Okay, I'll give you that one. That wouldn't take an extensive amount of time, but to completely cobble together, edit, and then use the video technology needed at that time in 2010 to make a white person appear as if they tried to do blackface was just, I mean, I, I don't even know what technology you would use to do that at that time. Like, 
or how much editing that would take. I mean, that would be like high levels of CGI and lighting and all kinds of like editing magic that none of us at that time had access to. We were like literally J vloggers with GoPros and cell phones filming like random stuff in the streets. None of us were like executive level Hollywood producers of videos, nor would anyone take the time or the trouble to create such an alteration to one of her videos. She could have just come out and been like, guys, this was a horrible idea. Why did I think I should do this? I'm so sorry. That's why I took the video down. I'll learn to be more respectful of race and skin color in the future. What is my problem? I need help. <laughs> like Anything but just like denying it, taking it down, and then going with the you photoshopped me card. So um, this actually began like the sort of downfall that she went through and it only got worse from there after a few groups kind of started to call her out for some behavior um, she was getting noticed for doing. Um, these groups were Pretty Ugly Little Liars, um, Encyclopedia Dramatica, and Pole Board on 4chan. Okay, these are the sources. I think you can still go back through all these and all this stuff still is up there and exists. So. If you want to look at my source of information for this, these are the people who collected it. Yes, I realized, not the best sources, <laughs> but they do have actual pictures, videos, etc. that have the original stuff that Mira did online. Okay, so you can at least see the uploads. The uploads are not a lie. They're not, they're not photoshopped or edited as she claims. Um, you can get that origin and source material from those websites if you want to. Um, and the thing that she was being called out for by these three contributors to the downfall were the fact that a certain JVlogger was going around to other female JVloggers channels and trash talking them. Um, the comment that was most mostly seen was that um, these sock puppet accounts that were being made by another JVlogger who eventually turned out to be Kanada Jin, sorry spoiler alert, it was Kanada Jin, was going around and saying things like this J vlogger is super fake. Meanwhile, Kanada Jin is always 100% legit with everything she talks about. And the crazy thing about this is she would make these comments on like every female YouTuber's video. Um, it was mostly female. Texas, uh, to Texas, Texan in Tokyo, um, Rachel and June, Sharla, uh, Michaela, um, all these other female J vloggers who were blowing up at the time, doing great. Um, still are, most of them still are today unless their channel stopped like a uh, Texan in Tokyo. Um, I, I guess um, her motivation to do this was, I, I guess I gotta say jealousy, I mean. But the other thing was we were also getting into the age of YouTube making money during this time. So um, I, I think there was a certain amount of greed intertwined with this. And these two, these screenshots of her doing this are still up to this day too on these different websites I just talked about. And uh, they've been proven multiple times over to be legit screenshots that did actually happen that are timestamped. Of course, she went back and deleted a lot of them, but once you put something up on the internet, it's there forever. We know this, okay. Um, her, her hate kind of got her in a lot of trouble with this. And at first she denied it. She's like, how would you know that this is me? Like this could be any sock puppet account from anybody in the JVlogging community. So people went through it. And the one thing that they pointed out to draw it back to her was she had a very specific way that she typed, wrote and message. Um, I don't know what, a nice way to say this, but her grammar, spelling and the way she presented a sentence was very Canada Jin esque. Um, she misspelled the same words over and over again in all of these. Um, her grammar was not good. Um, and her way of talking was similar to all the same ways she put text and comments in her own video. Like it matched verbatim. But um, that wasn't the evidence that really nailed her to. Uh, the board as far as being guilty. It was the fact that they eventually even went through and got all the IP addresses of these sock puppet accounts. They were all the same and they all drew back to Kanada Jin. When you do like a who is, it came back to her. Um, the same as her channel, the same as her YouTube, the same as her profiles on Twitter, Instagram, everything. Okay, all the IP addresses were the same. You can't, 
you can't fold the IP address. Back then too, we didn't have like VPNs and stuff like that. Like no one was paying for a VPN service. So she was, she was really caught red handed. She got caught bad, bad. Um, the other thing that came up during this time, and this is where I thought, this is what I thought was like the only thing going on when I recalled the memory of this, um, clothing, advertising clothing on your channel really kind of drove Mira nuts. Um, Rachel in June, uh, still a very popular channel to this day, still doing great, great presentation, great quality videos, even back then, way ahead of the rest of us as far as their quality con is, is concerned. Um, they did a review of uh, a Chinese clothing company that would let you buy a massive amount of clothing, but the clothing itself wasn't high quality. And so Rachel was kind of sponsored by them to talk about and review. And Rachel was extremely uh, open about how she felt about this clothing. She came out and said like, look, they gave me a bunch of clothes. These things are awesome. They're fashionable. I love wearing them, but they don't last very long. They start to get tears, like, you know, the clothing starts to fall apart. It's not high quality. You can see some of the stitching is kind of garbage. But if you ever wanted to do like a huge clothing haul for a low price, and get a bunch of fashion, this is a good company to go with. She was just like really open and honest about this. And this drove Kanada Jin nuts. And this is what I thought, this is where I got pulled into it and saw them starting to fight about it and thought like, oh, you know, like, well, I mean, Rachel's being completely honest. Why is Kanada Jin so angry about this? And I think it was um, jealousy. I think that's the only thing I can chalk it up to. She was really jealous that Rachel was getting these sponsorships she was getting these fashion sent to her she was being asked by fashion companies to wear pose and present and she wanted to go out and call her a sellout for this for her trying to push garbage clothing on her fans for her not being real about how bad the quality of these clothing were but like she was she was totally upfront and honest about it she was clear in the fact that yeah you got a lot of stuff but yeah it wasn't the greatest stuff ever so if you know, like I said, you wanted a big buy with low quality. This was your ticket, you know, and this this is what inf absolutely drove Mira nuts and got her into like sending all these sock puppet accounts over, trying to tear down Rachel's channel, trying to tear down Rachel, trying to attack her on like every social media she had and also had all the comments drawn back to her that proved she was the one doing this and that she had been so angry about it. Um, so, um... When she got called out about this, uh, Mira went into panic mode. Kanada Jin went into panic mode. Um, she didn't know quite what to do. Uh, her defensive play is a interesting one. I'll put it that way. That's the nicest way I can say it. Um, okay, I had to like write this down step by step, what she went through to try and prove that she was not the person who made the sock puppet accounts attacking Sharla, Rachel, June, um, Michaela, all these other YouTubers. Her defense was to get her friend, um, who was known as Cat at the time, to take a picture of her holding up a sign, and you can still go back to all these little websites I just talked about, Ugly Little Liars and all this other stuff, um, and see this picture of Cat holding up a piece of paper that says, I am not Mira. And it's just her up to the camera like this, holding a piece of paper that says, I am not Mira. And um, she convinced her friend Cat to do this because she said, she was being cyber stalked by someone who was obsessed with her, which is like real things that do happen. You do get like stalkers and stuff like that when you do this YouTube stuff. Um, but she convinced Kat that I want you to do this because um, I want that person who is stalking me to realize they're not actually talking to the real Mira. It's actually just your account and hopefully they'll just calm down and not harass me anymore. But what she did instead was after she got her to make this picture, she went to those different boards, 4chan, Pretty Ugly Little Liars, um, Encyclopedia Dramatica and she said guys guys I found the person who's been making the sock puppet accounts it's this girl Kat look here she is holding up the picture saying I'm not Mira I'm the real one doing all the harassing um, of course this put Kat in a really bad situation people reverse image search who Kat is they find her social media um, they start to attack her and ask her why the heck are you doing this why are you harassing people like Rachel and June and Sharla and Michaela and all that and of course, Kat's like, what the heck? What are they talking about? Like, oh, this picture that I held up that said, I'm not Mira. 
well, I gotta let them know like what Mira told me I was doing when I held up this picture. So of course she comes forward with her full story and says like, look, and then she even has like a ton of receipts behind it. She's got like the screenshots of messaging. She's got the calls recorded. She's got like everything proving that she was tricked into holding up this sign, thinking she was preventing her friend from being cyber stalked online by a harasser. Instead, her friend was framing her as a harasser. Not a great way to proceed with a friendship. Not a lot of loyalty going on there. Um, Bad look, real bad look. Um, now this this stuff I didn't find out till way later, um, and I remember going back through this and being shocked at how complicated it got. I was just like, oh my god, there's so many layers to this. Like, I completely forgot this part. When I saw the picture again of Cat holding up the picture that said, "I'm not Mira," I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this now. And so, um, you know, and all this stuff, I'm not putting it up on the screen right now. I'm not going through all of this because. This can get my video taken down. People can claim these pictures. This can, if I show old videos and things like that, people can try and do copyright claim. I'm not gonna struggle through all this. If you don't believe me, go to the websites I just talked about, check it out. The, all this stuff is archived. Um, you know, do your own work to, um, you know, prove me wrong if you really think I'm wrong. But I'm going through everything that's still up on the internet right now as evidence. But I'm not putting it here in my video because I don't wanna deal with copyright strikes, with. Pictures trying to be taken down, video being tried to take it down, all that kind of stuff. I'm just too lazy to worry about fighting that stuff. I'm not going to try and make an excuse like, no, I want to improve my integrity by just only going by words. No, I just don't want to. I'm too lazy to fight copyright strikes on my channel. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay, so um, now there's a bigger controversy behind Kanada Jin. And at this point, um, there's a lot of talk about her getting sued by other J vloggers for defamation of character, which um, I could see where that could happen. Um, there's even talk of people trying to get her deported from Japan. And um, I think all this was was people really caught up in the heat of the moment. You know, they got a ton of hate because of Kanada Jin. So um, when you're given a lot of hate, you throw a lot of hate back. And that's what was happening at this time. No lawsuits ever did come from this. Uh, no one, I don't believe Mira ever was deported for this. Um, I don't think any lawyers were ever hired and took a look at this case and were like, we can definitely get her for defamation of character. Could that have actually happened? Yeah, maybe. I think you probably could have hired a lawyer who could have gotten the videos taken down um, where Mira is saying like, you know, these people are lying about the quality of clothes and stuff like that. But it would have been like so much money. Like, you know, lawyers don't work for free. Everybody always says, I'm gonna hire a lawyer until they find out how much a lawyer costs. Um, and so none of this stuff ever happened. There was a lot of threats from both sides. No one ever hired lawyers or had a lawsuit or got deported or anything like this. But I will say at the end of the day, Rachel and June were completely in the right, kind of Jin, completely in the wrong for how she handled this situation. Now, later, later down the line, I get a call one day. This is where I'm inserted into this story. I get a call and a bunch of messages from Mira, from Kanada Jin. And you can even go back and check out this video. I still have it up online uh, of the time that I got the call. And she's telling me all this stuff about, like she's getting death threats still from the video that I put up covering the drama that went on during this time. Her family's getting death threats. Um, she's feeling like she wants to delete herself because of all these old videos about her, including my video too. I'm feeling horrible. I'm... Um, you know, no matter how bad drama gets, I don't want to see anybody delete themselves. I don't want to see anybody get like attacked and harassed. Um, she completely convinces me with screenshots and all different types of stuff. I fall for it hook, line, and sinker. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this girl's taking this much hate. And my mind goes to a place where I say, look, I don't know exactly what happened. Um, I wasn't there for all of this. I wasn't the one receiving the harassment on either side. I just covered what I saw go down. Um, and also, none of these lawsuits or de deportations ever happen. So I start to question myself too. I start to be like, wait a second, she's showing me these things of like her getting this level of hate and attack and death threats and stuff like that. And what have I done? Um, I start to really question myself. I take down my old video. I take down the video covering the drama and I put up a new video saying like, hear me out about Mira. Like, please stop attacking her. Like, this is too much. Like, even if she did do some of these things in the past, um, she doesn't deserve to be like driven to the point of self-deletion. Um, now later, I have friends, I have people, you know, even Rachel and June and even Charlotte reach out to me and they're like, Scott, you are being tricked. None of this is true. Please like 
send the screenshots you've been given and stuff like that to someone who understands um, what a photoshopped or altered uh, screenshot is like, I'm sure you will find that none of those are real. So I do that. I send it to people on, at the time I had a group called the Unrest Team, and they actually helped me out a lot with technical stuff. Awesome bunch of guys. We did all, all kinds of stuff. We collabed together. We made a secondary channel together that completely bombed. But they, they're awesome. Still to this day, I talk to all of them. They're awesome guys. Um, they're far more techie than I am. One of them, I think, even has like a computer engineering degree or a software engineering degree. I could, sorry, correct me. If you're watching this right now, one of the people from the unrest team, correct me in the comments below. But um, he went through it and he was like, yeah, dude, like here, let me show you like the size of the text in this screenshot compared to the size of the text in this actual MS, uh, this SMS. And you, you can see how it's been altered and stuff like that. You can see how like these little lines that encapsulate the entire messaging system. You see how like they don't exactly line up pixel perfect. That's an altered screenshot, Scott. And I'm like, oh no, I've been hoodwinked. Um, so I go back, I put my video back up. Um, I still leave up my other video that says leave mirror alone because um, I kind of like to just admit when I've screwed up. I kind of like to leave the evidence up there to even kind of document my screw up so I can look back and get a life lesson of like, what were you thinking back then? I even leave up my most cringy videos. I don't think there's anything that's I've ever taken down permanently. Um, I left it all up there so I can go back and look at this now and even if you search like Kanada Jin up that video still comes up called like leave Kanada Jin alone or hear me out about Kanada Jin hear me out about Mira or something like that and you'll see like I am completely convinced in that video that she's like getting death threats and you know on the edge of self-deletion and everything like that um, so I leave my mistakes up there but, you know I need to admit to them I need to say where I was wrong and that's part of the point in this whole story where I was an idiot and I was wrong um, and I should say, I should say at this point, I don't think I've ever like apologized officially to Rachel and June and Charlotte and all them. I'm sorry, that was dumb. I'm really stupid, okay? Looking back on it now, like, wh what an idiot, right? Like, <laughs> because as you see this story can continue to go, you'll realize like, oh, yeah, this is just like a repeating pattern that Kanada Jin does over and over again. Attack people, make massive mistakes, get caught, and then beg to be forgived and talk about how bad her life is because of the problems she herself caused. So um, after this, like everything kind of falls apart. Her channel's losing subscribers. Um, her views are plummeting and Kanada Jin kind of hides out for a little bit, but then starts to try and make a comeback by making collabs with smaller YouTubers in the JVlogging community. One of those people being Rodi in Japan. Might be Rodi in Japan. Rodi, R-O-D-I. Now, I was really confused about this guy at first. I thought Rodi, Roddy, and Kanada Jin were a couple now, and they were making videos together as a couple. Well, it turns out that's not the case at all. If you look up Kanada Jin again, you'll see a video by Roddy um, called The Truth About Kanada Jin, where she was madly in love with this guy. She did everything she could to court this man, and he was not having it. Um, he in turn seems like a pretty stand-up guy like he knew she was in a relationship with a secondary boyfriend at the time and was still pursuing him and he was like that's not cool you have a boyfriend why are you trying to put the moves on me even to the point that like he contacted her boyfriend and was like she's telling me you guys broke up is this true like she's putting the moves on me like i'm uncomfortable and this is happening in social situations where like he's meeting her and a group of friends at a club they're spending the night at a internet cafe and she's trying to put the moves on him and he's just really uncomfortable with this and he comes right out and makes a whole video airing out his grievances during this time to kind of be consumed by the love she has for this guy Rodi um, she finds out he's Muslim and she completely goes full Muslim like she I guess learns studies goes after every bit of knowledge she can eating up everything about Muslim and there's look, there's nothing wrong with that. Like pursue any religion that you believe in. Like go go bonkers as much as you want. Like go go really into it deep. Look, look, I started to study Shintoism. There's a lot of spiritual guidance I find from Shintoism from being in Japan and studying some of the stuff that my brother-in-law teaches as a Shinto priest. Okay, so like I, I get it, I get it. It gives you a sense of calm. It gives you a sense of meaning. Um, it can invite you into a community that can be very welcoming and make you feel a part of something, which I think she was starting to find with the Muslim community in Japan at that time. And also because 
Rhodey himself was Muslim, I think she thought her going this deep into that religion that she would convince him to fall in love with her, I guess. I don't know exactly what it was, but she went deep. I mean, like, started wearing a hijab, um, dressing in that manner, studying the Quran, everything like that. And But Rhodey, Rhodey's just not having it. Like, Rhodey is a stand-up guy who's like, look, um, you have a boyfriend right now. I myself am a man who wants to, like, go through a very traditional sense of meeting and falling in love with a girl. And... A girl who's already in a relationship, no, I'm just not gonna do it. That's not cool with me. I'm gonna see you as a sister right now because you are currently in a relationship and I will not fall for your temptation tactics. Um, this video is still up. You can, uh, if you search Canada Gen 3, this is one of like the first videos that shows up in the four videos that come down. Um, she begins to fall in love with him and she goes full Muslim and she goes to the extreme like she did with Japan. So let's, dial it back a couple bits on the timeline and you remember her first videos were like I'll never teach my kid English in Japan English is useless in Japan if you're in Japan you need to only speak Japanese and be Japanese and act Japanese well she she starts to do the same thing again with being Muslim like and look again um, being any religion I'm cool with I don't there's no religion I think is like ultra wrong unless it goes in the in terms of like harassing or hurting or you know like, uh, who, who are those crazy people back in America who would, like, go to funerals and, like, hold up signs that were, like, God hates the gays and stuff like that? Like, that's an evil religion, okay? Like, that's that's bad news bears. Like, that's that's a sense of, like... and But at the same time, we do need to admit that, like, all religions that we see throughout history do have their bad sides. So, for example, I was raised Catholic. Um, I can definitely look back on Catholicism and say... Hey, some pretty bad stuff happened in Catholicism. I can also look at the Christian aspect of religion and say some bad stuff happens with Christianity too, where people, if they become like super fundamentalist extremist Christians and tell people, you're going to hell, I hate gay people. If you don't follow my religion, you're going to be burning in hell because God will not accept you if you do not accept his religion. You know, Christianity is the only, like that's, I feel like that's not the cool side. And that's not, that's not everybody who's Christian, all right? Like, same thing I want to say about being Muslim. There is fundamentalist extreme sides of being Muslim that I think are not cool. Um, and I think this about every religion, okay? I want to make this very clear so that I'm not stepping on any toes here. Again, every religion, I believe, is mostly based around peace and love. Let's be honest. But there's extreme ways in which they are contorted or twisted to become angry or evil or... Um, things are denied. So like, for example, like I said, with the Catholic Church and its history of like um, essay and abuse of altar boys and priests doing horrible stuff. We can't deny that that stuff happened within Christ you know, Catholicism. Um, you know, let's be real and mark the points that are like not cool about our religion, um, but honor the parts that are, like I said, like the peace and love aspects. Let's, let's look more on that. Let's focus on that. So... Um, it doesn't work out for her and Rhodey. She never is able to start a relationship, even after going headfirst, diving deep into um, being Muslim. Um, and even, I, I wrote down this quote that I saw from Rhodey's video. He said, after getting to know Mira, I can truly say I have no idea who she is. And he he even talks about the fact that like she starts to get really deep into Muslim and being Muslim and trying to do all this to convert herself to like get closer to him and he's just like why why are you doing this like i'm muslim i love my religion it's cool but i don't know why you're like converting to this to try and get me interested in you it's just it's not working and it never does like this completely flat lines and this ends up even hurting her channel more on top of it she starts to change her whole channel from being a channel about japan into being about being a muslim woman and the scary thing about this is she starts to go into what I talked about as the most extreme fundamentalist beliefs to the point that she gets on Twitter and starts getting into these like insane Twitter spats trying to forge a path for her devotion to this by going with the most extremist views. So please brace yourself. And again, please realize this is not my thoughts on being Muslim. Like this is her extreme posts that like I think twist <laughs> a lot of what she thinks she believes, I what she thinks she's become. Um, one post she made that said, I hate feminists who complain about Saudi Arabia. I wish I could punch in their face and break their teeth and smash their heads. They are all lying swines. 
yikes. Um, I mean, before she, she never talked about religion. She was an atheist before this, and um, like she she had no religious beliefs whatsoever. Her channel had nothing to do with being Muslim. But like this is suddenly like her new Muslim beliefs, and like this is not Muslims, okay? Like this is this does not represent being Muslim, okay? So please, I understand that. I just I just want to make that very clear, okay? Twitter post number two. Why do people fight against girls getting married at 12 in Saudi Arabia when there are Canadian and American girls getting pregnant at 12? How come you try to stop this while turning a blind eye to it happening in your own country? N no, not a good look. Okay, so this is like killing her channel now. Like, I told you at that point she was at 70,000 subscribers. I think she eventually reached a point where she got to like almost 130,000. Well, it gets so bad. Like, so many people unsubscribe because of this stuff, these Twitter posts that she's making and things like that that she loses, I think, almost half of that, going all the way back down to even below 70,000. I believe if you search her channel, it's still up with no videos, no photos, no banner, no picture of herself. Um, I don't know why she didn't just delete the channel, but it's still got, I think, like 70,000 subscribers on there, somewhere around that amount. Um, I mean, this is... <laughs> Getting into these extreme forms are the equivalent of like if I made posts on Twitter defending my Catholic upbringing, saying like, you know, um, altar boys who got essayed and stuff like that, you know, essay happens everywhere in every religion. So why are you only looking at the abuse that's happening in Catholicism? Like that doesn't justify it. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't defend it. It just makes you realize, oh. This kind of bad stuff happens everywhere. That's horrible. <laughs> like, there, there's no defense there. That's not a good um, defense. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Okay, the other big thing that happened at the end, too, is apparently uh, she's gone from Japan now. And um, she's been denying this for quite some time. Um, she denied it until pretty much she completely dropped off the face of the Internet. Um, the reason people started to um, suggest that this was the situation was that she actually even got interviewed on a documentary about Canadian women converting to Muslim, uh, being Muslim, and she was also posting that she was doing things in Japan at the same time while this was still filming. And in the video where she's being interviewed about this, I mean, she's clearly in Canada. Like, you know, there's Canadian flags in the background. You can see snow. It's it's Canada. <laughs> like, people know the place that she's actually being videoed at and filmed and interviewed. And she's still saying, no, I'm still here in Japan doing all this stuff. Also, there's just like a bunch of other shots where she's doing like updates, posts, Instagram stuff, Twitter things. And all the background is Canada. It's clearly Canada. But she's also saying, no, no, no I'm still in Japan and stuff like this. Now, um, was she going back and forth between the two countries? Who knows what her visa status is or anything like that? Honestly, I don't care. Um, she's off the internet now. She's gone now. All her presence is pretty much gone. Um, and we must end this video by asking, is there any sort of redemption? Is there any sort of comeback possibility for Kanada Jin? Um, I think she still could. I think she still could. Um, and I think she could come back in a way that would nearly resurrect her channel. Um, her channel's still up, it still exists. I don't know if she still has the login information or whatever, but it's still got like 70,000 subscribers just sitting around there with zero videos on it. Um, they would get an update, they would get an alert, they would get a notification if she suddenly made a video on there again. And what she could do is she could come back on there and um, reflect on the wild journey she had on YouTube and in her life. She doesn't need to renounce her religion. She doesn't need to like renounce everything she did in the past, but she needs to go back over and review it and talk about why she did the things she did, admit to the things she did, apologize for the things she did, um, and I guess kind of do like a sort of really stark, blunt autobiography covering the wild time she had on YouTube while she was in Japan and her conversion to being Muslim. Um, I think it would be an incredible video. I think a lot of people would watch it and be like, oh my God, where have you been all this time? This is wild that you've come back now. And this is wild that you're showing us all this stuff and being so honest with your life and what you did on YouTube and how wild it went. Because I think when we're looking at Canada Jin, we're looking at the situation of hurt people hurt people. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happened to her in the past. I can't pretend to know, but she is someone who lashed out at a lot of people, and when people publicly lash out and attack a lot of people the way that she did so 
aggressively and so maliciously, it's usually because they experience the same thing in their own past life, the past part of their childhood, teenage years, high school. I don't know if she was bullied or she was harassed or she dealt with cliques or she dealt with being left out or um, she had trouble finding a community to be part of, but something contributed to this that if she went and got like a lot of mental health and guidance and um, built herself back up, she could look back on this and reflect and talk about the journey she went through that I feel like would not only help her, like obviously a ton to realize who she was and who she is now and the person she became and all the trials she went through and all the wild stuff she did. I mean, I've had to kind of do this with my own channel. I've kind of had to um, reflect on some of the dumb things I've done on my channel, some of the dumb fights I got into. Um, I had to have a point at my channel where two years I did not make a video. I did go get mental health treatment. I did go to a psychologist. I did start taking medication. And it was the two years when I first started my business in Japan. Um, and it was hell. I was going through hell and I had to come back and say that, guys, I was gone all this time because I didn't know how to run a business in Japan. I didn't understand the full aspect of how busy it would be, how hard it would be, how stressful it would be. Um, I needed medication at the time because I was deeply depressed. Um, my ADHD was through the roof with anxiety and everything like that. I needed a lot of help at that time and I had to come back and reflect on how I didn't know what I was doing. I put, I put too much of a load on myself mentally and really struggled to get everything balanced to a point where I felt like I could come back and be honest with myself. Um, and this is something she could do too, just be honest with herself, come back and reflect on all this. The, she could have a redemption arc, it could happen. Um, and I think that's that's where we're at right now. If she ever were to come back to the internet, and like, look guys, she's, she's completely gone. Um, if there is any trace of her on the internet, if there is anything she is uploading, if there is anything she is doing, I can't find it. I don't know it. I don't know where it is. Um, of course, you know, let me know in the comments down below if there is some other community you follow her in that I don't know about. I did a lot of research for this video. I went back through and watched everything and there's nothing I could find at this point of any sort of peep about her. Um, I don't think she does Twitter. I don't think she does YouTube. I don't think she does Instagram or anything anymore. Um, she might be living a really happy life right now for all we know. And she wants to leave all this behind, which is fine. But like I said, this is a massive, massive part of JVlogging history. And I kind of wanted to just compact it into one video and let you guys know about it, which went on for almost a full hour. Wow, 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 wow. That was amazing. So what do you guys think? Were you around for all this, all this drama that Kanada Jin went through? Um, were you around for all the stuff, all the trouble that got stirred up and everything like that? If you were, what were your thoughts about it at the time? Like, what did you go through as far as being part of the communication? Because a lot of like viewers and stuff got involved in this. Um, this this went epic. This went through like all strains, all levels, all layers of the JVlog community. This was like a massive, massive back and forth. Um, and again, like I said, I just want to end this video with like my apologies to Rachel and June for not fully understanding or believing the situation that they went through. They went through quite a bit during that time. I'm very glad to see their channel going strong and doing well. Um, my apologies to Sharla because I think she even got like, at one point she got blamed for being the sock puppet accounts, which is totally not true. Like Sharla never did anything malicious during this at all. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where I want to leave it. I do want to end by saying, um, Thank you to all of you who are coming back. I'm having so many people come back and being like, wow, I'm so glad you're still uploading. I'm so glad you're here watching my uploads. Like, this is awesome. You've stuck with me for 15 years. Those of you who've been sticking around watching this and telling me you're excited that I'm still uploading, I'm excited you're here. This is so awesome. This is like chatting with old friends. What a good time. I also want to say a massive thank you to members. If you want to become a member, you get one extra video every week. Um, they're much more personal videos. They kind of delve deeper into my own life and kind of struggles I'm going through between living between America and Japan right now. Um, it's going to be more about Japan soon because in less than two weeks, I'm headed back to Japan. Very excited. Miss my family dearly. Can't wait to get back there. And I will be there for the next two months too, making videos. And you'll be getting an extra video from Japan for every week for as long as I'm there and into the future forever. You get an extra video. Members, thank you. I've got 31 members right now, which I mean, it blows my mind. 31 people want to join my channel. It's only $1.90 a month and you get that extra video. I want to say thank you to John Man Bob, Light Low Louch, 
Smile Keytel 13, who just upgraded to uh, the uh, Kohai level, which is $5 a month. Thank you very much, Smile Kita. Worm Self, William Adams, Chrissy Meow, Juzas Casilius, Obscuric, Sriracha, Frorasu, No Dub, Only Raw, Harry Richardson, Citrus, Steve Ring, Capybara Daimyo, Fat Jaskins, Sprinkly Donut, Yodaru, Luna in Cola, Ricardo Contreras, Un Aloki, Slayer Duck, Blind Man Travels, Jonas Slocum, Ice Cold, Reinhardt or Die Trying, Trek Nick, I Am Sandpaper, Aaron Spooner, and Andre Sanchez. Thank you guys so much. Look forward to your newest video coming out tomorrow. Every Sunday I put out a new video for those members. They get a whole extra 30 to 40 minutes of video every week. And uh, like I said, they're like more personal views. If you want to know more about um, kind of like some hotter topics that I don't feel comfortable discussing because I don't want to stir up a giant uh, fever pitch of comment war, I discuss them there in the members video. So come join there for um, a lot more of the hot goss, if you know what I mean. Um, until then, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. If you've stuck around for this whole nearly one hour video, wow, you're awesome. If you are new here, um, the biggest thank you you could give me for this video would be a subscription. Um, I will constantly lose subscribers forever because I am a channel that Every time I make a video, anybody who is not watching anymore is usually deleted from my channel. That's how YouTube works now. If you make a new video and YouTube catches like, oh, you made a new video and this person who subscribed 10 years ago isn't watching you anymore, let's get them out of here. They obviously don't want to watch this anymore. So every time I upload, I lose more subscribers. It's my own fault for how I went about doing this YouTube thing. I did not realize this would be the future of YouTube. I just want to stick though with the people who are still around and make those videos for you because you guys rock for being here, for talking to me in the comments, for coming back and being like, I've been watching you for 10 years. It's so awesome to see you uploading all the time. No, you're awesome. You make this possible. You are my motivation. You are what makes this fun still. I don't make a lot of profit. I don't make much money. I think I make like 40 bucks a month doing YouTube. If you want to know like that big money bags that lands at my door every month, about 40 bucks I make from YouTube every month. Um, but... The biggest thank you you can give me is that subscription, comment, like, or even dislike is fine too. People can definitely dislike this. And like I said, I want to hear your reflections. I want to hear what you have to say. And I want to hear your feedback on what you remember from this ultra tumultuous time in the JVlogging community and history and timeline. What a wild time. Until next time, I hope you have a great rest of the day. I've been on Rested and I'll talk to you again soon.